What's going on world? I'm Dave and I've been traveling a lot recently. So in this video, I'm gonna share some of my favorite things that I ate and did in San Antonio, Texas. My family had a great time on this trip. So I hope this video helps you plan out what you wanna do and see while you're in San Antonio. Also, we have a two year old. So if you're looking for family friendly things to do, we'll cover a little bit of that in this video as well. And of course, if you live in San Antonio and you somehow stumbled upon this video, let me know how we did on our trip and definitely add suggestions in the comments for things that we should do next time. We'll definitely be back soon. Okay, so that's plenty of intro. So let's get into some things to eat and do in San Antonio, Texas. I generally cover a lot of food on my channel. So let's start with one of my favorite meals that we had in San Antonio, Toro in St. Paul Square. This is a great tapas spot that's outside of the main downtown area that you'll probably be in for the bulk of your time in San Antonio. So I wasn't mad at getting out of that area and also getting cheaper parking and a great meal at the same time. We've been to Spain before, so getting some of that Spanish tapas vibe in Texas was pretty great for us. The service was awesome, and they also have a really nice outdoor patio and happy hour, both of which can be great for groups. For us, the patio was pretty perfect to have your two-year-old just wander around in circles outside while you're eating your meal. We liked pretty much everything that we got here, and we got a lot, but I really like the cochinita pibil tacos and also the shishito peppers. I could eat both of those pretty much all day. Definitely would have been a great date spot or a place to have kind of a nicer dinner while you're in San Antonio. Love Toro a lot. Check it out if you're in San Antonio. And I thought about saving this part till later, but if you're going down to San Antonio, you know about the Riverwalk. You're going to check it out, so let's get into it. We walked up and down the Riverwalk a bunch bunch of times, daytime, nighttime, everything in between. And it was pretty cool to see how the Riverwalk kind of changes from section to section. There are definitely quieter parts with local restaurants where, you know, you can just take a pretty chill stroll along the Riverwalk, which is great. And then there are also the really busy parts with a bunch of chain restaurants, bars, bachelor parties, bachelorette parties, all of that kind of stuff. There's also that on the Riverwalk, so it can really change depending on where you are. It was great for people watching, but you do have to keep things moving, especially at night, because it does get pretty crowded and very lively. But if you're looking for more of a chill vibe, try to go to the Riverwalk earlier in the morning, where you'll see a bunch of people going for a jog or a nice walk before it gets super hot, and that's a good reason to get up early too and check out the Riverwalk. We also did a tour of the Riverwalk by boat, and to me, this was worth doing because it helped orient us a little bit with where things were along the Riverwalk. We also got a better handle on how far it would be to walk from place to place. If you're enjoying this look at San Antonio so far, please give this video a like so that YouTube will show it to more people. I'm a local YouTuber and those likes make a huge difference to get this video seen by more people. So I appreciate them so, so much now back to the video. Okay, so before we get into the Alamo, we also checked out the Pearl District, which had a bunch of shops, restaurants and bars and a really nice outdoor plaza that kind of felt like it was made for hanging out on a warm summer night. In addition to the restaurants and food hall, there were outdoor vendors, a splash pad for kids, and just some different areas where you could take a seat, hang out, take it all in. We had spent a lot of time at the Riverwalk and we actually ended up coming to the Pearl twice because it was a fun place for our son to run around. He had a great time at the splash pad. It's definitely lively there, but it's a slower pace than the Riverwalk. People just seem to be in a really good mood because it's a pretty beautiful space. We grabbed drinks inside the bottling department, which is a small food hall inside the Pearl. It's not huge by any means, but at the same time, it is nice to have a place where you can get some cheap eats and some food fast if you're running short on time and can't do a full sit down meal. We also got food at Best Quality Daughter that was coming up on a bunch of different lists for San Antonio food. And despite the generous portions and really good reviews all around, it just wasn't my favorite place that we ate in the city. It had incredible reviews for its take on Asian American food, but it just wasn't 100% for me. We did like the salt and pepper shrimp, but the texture of the egg rolls kind of threw me off a little. The noodles were good, but then the cashew chicken was almost too saucy for me. It just, it wasn't as good as the reviews made me think it was going to be. It certainly wasn't bad. I was just a little thrown off by the incredible reviews that we saw online. Now, if you're going to San Antonio, chances are you're going to visit the Alamo and I would absolutely recommend it. 
unlike a lot of tourist destinations, especially in the United States, it felt like this was a place that people respected the historical significance of. And I really like that a lot. You could almost feel it the second that you step onto the grounds and into the building. People weren't taking silly selfies or acting a fool or anything like that. And I really enjoyed that part about the Alamo. After we went, I learned that the Alamo is considered one of the most haunted places in San Antonio. And I would not be surprised by that based on its history. And you can definitely feel something when you walk into that building. Also, the area surrounding the Alamo has really been beautifully restored, and there were also character actors that would tell you the stories about the Alamo and also explain who some of the people in the statues were. So if you're maybe doing a homeschooling thing or trying to teach your kids something while they're on this trip, they will get that at the Alamo. To me, the Alamo was absolutely worth the heat, the parking fees, and everything else. I thought it was a really worthwhile trip while we are in San Antonio. Okay, let's get back to food for a second. And one of my favorite barbecue places that we tried in San Antonio was Pinkerton's. In general, I'm a really big fan of Texas barbecue and Pinkerton's did not let us down. The brisket, the ribs, the sides, all delicious and exactly what I wanted out of my Texas barbecue experience. Since you order your food at the counter, the wait actually was not too bad. We weren't like scoping out a table like you would at something like Pecan Lodge in Dallas. You just stand in the line, it moves fairly quickly, and it also gives you a lot of time to see what the people in front of you are getting so that you know exactly what you want by the time you make it to the front. Another thing that made Pinkerton stand out a little bit for us is that I feel like a lot of barbecue places have like a gravel parking lot or maybe they're a little bit out of the way, but Pinkerton's is actually connected to a nice little little park and grassy area where kids can run around and play or you can just sit and hang out on a warm night. So for us we were able to check out the Alamo, walk over to Pinkerton's and have a great meal and our son just crushed some macaroni and cheese and then burned it all off running around the grassy area. Since parking is pretty expensive in downtown San Antonio, we only had to pay one parking fee and this was a good way to check off two things on our list. And while we loved Pinkerton's and I'd absolutely go back in a second, San Antonio locals, Add your favorite barbecue places to the comments. Would love to check them out next time I'm in your city. Next up, the San Antonio Zoo was actually one of my favorite zoos that I've been to in the United States. It wasn't enormously huge like the San Diego Zoo, and it wasn't depressing like some parts of the LA Zoo or other zoos that you've been to in the US. And yes, it's not like the Singapore Zoo that runs circles around almost every zoo on the planet, but it is a really great zoo and it has some things that help it stand out. We went there first thing in the morning and the animals were really active because it wasn't too hot yet. And it was just the right size to either get through in the morning or the afternoon. One of the highlights for us is that you could buy the opportunity to feed birds and also giraffes. And while these experiences are pretty quick, they're unique and they are a lot of fun and I think that they're totally worth it. Our son absolutely loved feeding the giraffes and to this day he's still asked to check out the video of him feeding the giraffes. It was a little bit tougher for him to feed the birds but what a cool experience to be able to just spend a few bucks, stand in a quick line and to be able to do this. I thought it was pretty neat and they do a really good job of it there too where it's not like super commercial or it doesn't feel like you're being ripped off. Also next to the zoo is Kitty Park, which is about a hundred years old. It's an amusement park made for kids with a bunch of classic rides that have minimal frills, but have a lot of clunky mechanical charm. This place will always have a special place in our hearts because this was the first amusement park rides that our son ever went on by himself. He was 20 months old and had a really great time just driving the cars and riding the trains. He had a ton of fun here. And also just keep in mind, this is not Disneyland or Universal Studios. It's really small. The target age for Kitty Park is probably like two years old to five years old, maybe. So just keep that in mind. Now for our more Zen crowd, the Japanese tea garden in San Antonio was definitely a pleasant surprise. And I think that this was just a theme in San Antonio in general, a lot of surprises. Traffic was not as bad as I thought. Things were a lot closer together than I thought, and the Japanese tea garden was a lot cooler than I thought. It was raining while we were there, but man, this place was really, really beautiful and a place that I wish that we had been able to spend more time while we were in San Antonio. If you're someone who just likes to take in beautiful, lush scenery that's different from what you probably see every day, this is a great spot for you. Super cool views, different spots to plop down. It just feels like a different experience while you're there. 
And man, we did a lot on this trip, so I'm just gonna run through three other food spots really fast that we enjoyed. We went to Nola Brunch and Beignets, which had all of the neighborhood vibes that you're looking for in a brunch spot, and it was on a ton of different lists. Of course, the beignets were amazing, our son destroyed his pancakes, and I really liked my chilaquiles that I had there as well. Our potatoes were a little bit undercooked, but you know, we're coming from Denver, so we don't get a lot of really good Southern food. So we're definitely gonna try it out while we're there and we're happy that we checked out NOLA. San Antonio locals would love to get your take on the best brunch spots in San Antonio. Please add them to the comments. We also went to Honcho's House of Churros and man, do they give you a lot of churros here. You can just go there and grab some churros at 9 p.m. and eat them with some ice cream sitting outside or in the small shop. And that's pretty neat. That's something that we don't have in Denver, and I don't think they have in a lot of different cities. Would absolutely love to check out some more churro spots the next time that we're out that way. To get us to explore a different part of downtown, we checked out Mi Tierra, which was actually a place that was recommended to us by our neighbor who used to live in San Antonio. Cool paintings and murals on the wall, mariachi singing, people singing at their seats. Sign me up. This was a really cool experience. Really, the food was just decent to me, but I did really enjoy the baked goods that we got inside Mi Tierra. And also, there's a nice plaza that you can walk around in outside after your meal. You're probably getting this already, but there's a lot of good food in San Antonio, and I look forward to trying more of it the next time that we're out there. Okay, so I tried to go fast, but that was basically our long weekend in San Antonio, so I hope that you enjoyed it and got to learn some things that you might want to check out when you're out that way. And yes, San Antonio locals, I know I missed some stuff. I didn't get that puffy taco. The Spurs weren't playing while we're in town. Let me know the things that I absolutely got to check out next time in San Antonio, and I'll take you up on those. If you're still with me, thanks so much for checking out this video, for those likes, and for sharing this video with the people that you're checking out San Antonio with. Thanks again for watching, and I hope that you have a great time in San Antonio, Texas.